Good afternoon, and thanks to everyone for joining us here at Nats Park today. It's an exciting day for the entire Nationals organization. To get things started, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Nationals President of Baseball Operations and General Manager Mike Rizzo and new manager Dave Martinez. Thanks, FP. I appreciate it. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming out. And um, it's, uh, again, as FP said, it's, a, it's an exciting uh, special day here at Nats Park uh, with the uh, introduction of our, our new uh, team leader and, uh, and manager, Dave Martinez. Um, I would like to thank the, the Lerner family for, uh, for attending today's uh, press conference. It's, it's always great to, to see them in the, in the audience. And thanks to, for, to all the media for coming out. Uh, it's it's really an honor and a pleasure to uh, to introduce uh, Dave to uh, to the to the Washington media because he's been a guy that we've th thought about and and I've known for a long time and have, have really admired the way he goes about his business, the the way he handles pl players, the way he treats people, uh, and not only his his baseball acumen but uh, the uh, the way he he has such a creative mind and em employs different uh, types of uh, ideas and information and and puts them into a winning environment. Uh, this is the man who uh, had a, a lot to do with <laughs> developing cultures in very, very analytically based and winning organizations, the Tampa Bay Rays and the Chicago Cubs for years, uh, and uh, his resume is impeccable. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce the new manager of the Washington Nationals, Dave Martinez. Done. Thank, you, <laughs> thank, thank all of you. I appreciate you guys all coming out. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that I had to put my pin down that I got that I, I love already, but I'll wear it again, I'm sure. First and foremost, I want to thank the Lerner family, uh, their extended family, Mike Rizzo, uh, Baseball Ops, uh, all the people involved um, that got me here. Uh, I'm honored and elated to be a part of the Washington Nationals family. Uh, I'm looking forward to my tenure here, and uh, I really, really, really am blessed uh, to be able to work with some of the finest, which I believe one of the better teams in, uh, in the National League. And I'm looking forward to working with them and uh, being a big part of uh, the 2018 uh, championship season. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Mike. Um, we have microphones circulating on either side of the room. Please raise your hand and wait for the microphone before you ask your question. And please state your name and affiliation before your question. We'll open it up for questions now. Chelsea Janes, The Washington Post. Uh, welcome. Thank you. What have the last maybe few days been like for you and kind of how much does it mean to finally kind of get this opportunity after I know being interviewed many times over the last few years? It's, uh, it's been overwhelming. I've been on a lot of flights. Um, <laughs> but I welcome that very much. Uh, like Mike said, um, I've known Mike for quite a while. And uh, this is a half a dream come true to me to be able to work uh, – here with uh, with Mike and the Lerner family, um, and to see what they built. I mean, this is just a ongoing uh, ongoing thing that they've started years ago, and uh, to continue in the successes that they've had, and to get to that next that next level, which is win a World Championship here in Washington. I think the one um, the one thing I have to say after talking with the Lerner family and Mike, we have definitely have something in common. And that's the desire and passion to bring a world championship here to Washington. And uh, we're going to get it done. Mark. 
Uh, Mark Zuckerman from MassInSports.com. You were in the unique position of being able to see this team from across the field during the playoffs uh, just a few weeks ago. As you were watching them, what did you see, and what, if anything, did you see that uh, made you think there's something lacking or something that can be uh, improved on to get past that hurdle? Well, I, I really, well, first and foremost, as you know, it was not easy. Uh, we went to game five, and um, and on the other side, I've always had a, uh, a thing about never quitting. And uh, we preach that every day. Uh, it's something that I'll bring here. Um, we, we'll play till the last pitch of every game. Uh, we'll compete every single day. Uh, and we'll win as many games. The object is to win as many games as possible starting uh, from day one. So I, I think moving forward, this team doesn't lack much. It really doesn't. I think we just got to get over the fact that we're not here just to win a playoff game. We're here to win the World Series. Jamal. Hi, Jamal Collier, MLB.com. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Dave, when did you first, uh, you know, you've obviously been a coach and been a player. When did you first uh, you know, have dreams of becoming a manager? And just over the last couple of years when you've had interviews and, and not gotten jobs, did you ever feel discouraged or think that this opportunity might not come? You know, it's a, it was a learning process from the beginning. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, you know, I retired. I played for a lot of years, retired, uh, have four beautiful children. Um, had no, ins you know, I thought I'd be a good coach, but really didn't know if I wanted to be a coach because of the traveling. Uh, jumped in it. Joe called me up and and uh, asked me to to help him out in spring training one year. And next thing you know, I became the bench coach a couple years later. And uh, since that moment, you know, in 2008 was my first year. We ended up going to the World Series and losing. Uh, since then, I really had the burning sensation of uh, being considered as a manager one day and um, through uh, process and uh, preparation and going through all the interviews I've learned a lot about myself and my skills and um, which led me here to today and uh, like I said I appreciate Mike and the Lerner family uh, to see the value that I bring that I'll bring to the Washington Nationals. Over here, Dan Kolko with Masson. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. Um, you worked under a, a pretty strong manager in Joe Madden for, for quite a number of years. Um, what elements that he brought to the table as a manager do you see yourself maybe having now that you're a manager? And how do you maybe envision yourself differing from him in any number of areas, if at all? Joe and I have been pretty successful together. I really believe that why change something that really works? Um, I am very creative. Uh, I, I, we, we shared ideas together. Um, I'll bring a lot of that, those ideas here. Um, it's a whole different team. It's a whole different perspective here. So um, there might be a little changes uh, based on our, our, our players. But for the most part, you know, we're going to be prepared, stick to the process. I mean, that's the biggest thing that I've – I learned from Joe. It's it's a long season, and, and it's all about preparation and sticking to the process. Howard, Howard Fenderich with the yeah, Associated Howard. Press. Welcome Howard, to you've DC. Been for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you. <laughs> yeah, nice to see you too. Uh, <laughs> what um, what do you consider? Uh, the best trait or quality that you bring to managing what what about you will make you a good manager and is there any sort of area in which you think there's something you stand to learn still as someone who hasn't done that job yet well the, the one thing i could tell you that i'm very uh i have a lot of high energy positive energy um i'm not a guy that's going to sit in a manager's office i'm very hands-on uh, I love talking to players. I love conversations with players. Um, it's my strong suit. Uh, I collaborate a lot with uh, front office, Mike, ownership, um, to get it right. Look, I, 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 I meant this sincerely. This is um, this is a big family. You know, we're all in this together. We all got to have. We all got to think alike. Have the same ideas. 
uh, in order to really be successful. And um, I plan on, on, on bringing that and bringing everybody together uh, as a whole. And like I said, uh, the ultimate goal is to win that championship. I mean, to bring a, to bring a world title to the city of, of Washington and the fans who deserve it. I'll, I'll be honest with you, when I came here for the playoffs, um, this place was electric. I mean, even from the opposing side, it was uh, very. Uh, my hair, you know, my hair stood up to see all, how the fans were, all the red and all the man. I was, you know, it was I was jacked up about it, you know. So now to be on this side and hope they cheer for me and our team, it's going to be pretty cool. Barry, Mike, uh, Barry's from the Washington Post. Hey, Barry. Um, hi. Uh, <laughs> what did you know about Davey from the outside? prior to this process and then what did you learn about him sitting down that maybe you, you didn't know that that impressed you well you know looking from across the field with Davey for the for years that uh, that I've watched him is uh, first of all we have one thing in common Joe is my manager too so you know we I know I know Joe very well uh, I know how he treats people I know how how his uh, he's got an infectious a kind of a personality uh, but seeing Davey from from uh, across the field you know knowing him uh, as well as I did uh, just the, the way he interacted with the players the way he cared about people the 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 uh, the real the, the to me, what uh, what he brings to the table is is he's he's a he's a he's a perfect blend of of the old school 16 year veteran that uh, grinded out a, a 16 year uh, successful career in the big leagues and a uh, and a creative, uh, analytically minded. Uh, uh, a person that can put both of them together and really have the best of both worlds. So that you know, you, you talk about uh, creating cultures in both in Tampa and in, in Chicago, where, where they where they were very very successful, uh, and in he, and he was a big part of that. Uh, uh, you know, talking with Joe and Theo, who who could not spo have spoken high, more, more highly of, of of this person right here, uh, it was it was great information. Um, you know, we we talked to him four years ago, and, and we didn't give him the job. And, and this time, he he was, and, and I told this to, to Davey when we talked to him the second time. Uh, I, I we I flew to Tampa, and we had a, we had a, a a great day together in Tampa. And I told him, I said, you're in my humble opinion, you are much more prepared to be the manager right now than you were four years ago. Uh, a World Series championship under his under uh, ring on his finger, uh, deep into the playoffs, you know, each of the last three years, uh, t taking a, a greater leadership role each and every time that I, that I was around the Chicago Cubs and, and seeing how he handled things there, uh, taking taking his his. Uh, communication skills to another level. Now, now you now it's not this young, up and coming team. You're talking about having to deal with stars, the Bryants, the Rizzos, and and, and the Lackeys and the Lesters. Uh, so he's he's got that. Uh, and I think the the most impressive thing about it is I've been doing this a long time. I know a lot of people, and couldn't find one person to say a negative word about his about his character. And uh, to me, that was what it was all about. Charlie. Davey, Charlie Slows, Nationals Radio. Davey, Mike mentioned 16 years that you played for nine teams, the Cubs twice, and I was counting them up over those nine teams, had 16 different managers that you played for, even a rookie manager with the Giants who won 103 games in 1993. I know the game's changed, and Mike mentioned some of the things now with analytics and whatnot. What do you take from the different managers, different types that you played for over the years that maybe you bring to the table now the by the way I've known Charlie for a long time so hi Charlie <laughs> we go way back the um, the one the one thing that that I've known and that I've learned uh, from the best managers it's to stay positive I mean that's that's for me that's that's the key um, not every day got we're, get, we're gonna be successful on the field but we got to figure out ways how to stay positive and move on to the next day. Uh, I play for for Bobby Cox. I play for I play for Dusty. Um, uh, those guys taught me that hey, there's always another day. You know, after 15, 20 minutes, you know, I I I, I did something in Tampa when we were there, and and um, I, you know, I told the guys after 15, 20 minutes after after a loss, I want the music on. You know, we're going to forget about it. We're not going to dwell on it anymore. We'll move on. We, we you know we got another game tomorrow. And uh, 
and they loved it. And they, they bought in, and it was done. We had, you know, we ate together for the most part after the game, and it, it was over. And we came back ready to play the next day. So um, I think positivity, uh, a lot of energy. Let them know that we care, even when they have a bad game, when they have a good game. Let them know that we always care about them. Um, you, you'll get the most out of each player. Chelsea. Chelsea, from the post again, uh, you've obviously been in a position as a veteran player with a rookie manager, had to kind of get won over by him. What are the challenges of maybe kind of winning over a really veteran clubhouse like the one you'll have here, and, and how do you do that? It's uh, building relationships, communicating, um, trust. You know, those are the, those are the th three things that I, I kind of uh, instill myself with, you know, let them know that I'm on their side. Um, this is a partnership. Um, between all of us, so uh, they'll know that right away. Like, uh, as soon as this day is over, my, my job is to start getting on the phone and uh, start communicating with all the players. Um, I plan on flying to Arizona and going to Max's event Saturday just to meet with him. Eddie. Hey, Dave. Eddie Matz from ESPN. Welcome. Uh, two questions, actually. First, uh, do you prefer to be called Dave or Davey? <laughs> I hear both. It, it doesn't matter. So uh, when I came up to the big leagues, the, Davey, came about, uh, Harry, came, Harry Carey gave me that name, and it stuck. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you don't care so, which way we write it. No, yeah, and I don't, yeah, it doesn't bother me a bit. I, I'll answer to both. There, there's a lot of names that I won't answer to, <laughs> <laughs> but those are okay. Got it, duly noted. Secondly, uh, the number four on your back, is there a story behind four? Um, I wore 14 as a player. I wore one as a player. When, uh, when we signed Price, you know, he wore 14 at Vanderbilt. And um, so they asked me if I, you know, I give up my, my uh, number. You know, of course I did, but they gave me number four. The way I look at it is I have four kids, and it's like my four-leaf clover. So um, I've been pretty lucky and pretty successful with it. So when it, when it was available, I, I wanted it. Jorge? Dave, um, Jorge Castillo, Washington Post. Um, just, you know, working under Joe, he's obviously someone who's kind of been at the forefront of the analytics movement, sort of the data stuff. Um, how do you see yourself incorporating the analytics and data side of baseball? It's it's a huge part of the game today. Um, the more the more information that we can gather, uh, the b the better prepared we're going to be. So I like to use it a lot. Uh, my coaching staff will use it. As far as giving it to players, for me, you got to be awfully careful how much, how much information they get. Um, and I get it. You know, hey, like Mike said. I got a little bit of old school with a lot of new school. Um, this game is still played on a diamond, on dirt, on grass, with the bat, with the baseball, with the glove. We've done it. You know, these guys have done it since they were little. I do believe in that. Um, but it helps me make decisions like before the game or with lineups and with uh, other things and how we're going to do things. Um, and, and, and it's like I said, it's a big part of the game. Why not use it? I mean, the information's there. Uh, we should all use it. David. David Driver of Sports Exchange. Hi, Dave. Um, everybody knows about your relationship with Joe Madden. What about coming up in the minor league system with the Cubs? Uh, who's some of the managers you had? I think the 86 Iowa team, you played with Greg Maddox. Sort of talk about that and how that formulated for you. Yeah, it was definitely a great um, – I had some really good teachers back then, Jim Snyder, uh, Tony Franklin, um, uh, Jimmy Pearsall was my, you know, my outfield instructor. So uh, I learned how to play the game the right way. It's funny that you, you bring that up because the first time I ever met Joe was in 1983 in the Instructional League. And uh, I was just walking across the field. I was 18 years old, and he, he comes over to me and taps me on the back and says, hey, I really like the way you play the game. Now, I, I didn't know Joe from Adam. I was just looking at him like, oh, thanks, you know. And um, we then developed kind of a friendship every time we saw each other. And uh, in 2006, he calls me up out of the blue. He got the manager job with Tampa and asked me to come teach, uh, teach the game the way that I played it. And I thought that was pretty cool. So um, obviously I did it for uh, two spring trainings. And then in 2007, uh, George Hendricks got hurt. And I took over at first base coaching for him. And I, uh, apparently the players really liked me to be around. So after that year, I sat with him and Andrew over coffee at Starbucks uh, for about an hour and a half. And... I, was get, I told him I had to leave, and Andrew says, congratulations, you're the new bench coach. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he said, yeah. 
And I said, well, I got to think about it. He, and he said, no. And so I said, okay, I'm in, you know, so, and that's how this all came about. In the back. Dave, uh, Moisés Linares de Telemundo, Washington. Bienvenidos a la capital del país. Háblanos un poco de lo que significa ser uno más, un latino más en esta liga donde no hay tantos managers y lo que significa venir a un equipo como Washington que ha hecho cosas muy buenas pero se ha quedado corto en varias ocasiones. ¿Es esto para mí? Let me translate a little bit. Thank you. He, he asked me, um, first he welcomed me here to Washington and then he asked me about being uh, a Latin uh, manager now, and obviously Alex Corrigan, a, a chance to be managed, managing in um, in uh, Boston. Boston, yeah. So um, it feels great, uh, and it's it's gratifying. There's a lot of good uh, Latin personnel out in, uh, in baseball, coaching uh, in the front office, and it's nice to be um, to be recognized. Um, but I really believe that I'm here because of merit and uh, not because of any race or anything like that. So um, I'm excited about being here uh, because, I, because of, like Mike said, because he feels like I can do the job. And in the back. Eh, Dave, José Garza para Univision. Si puedes dar unas palabritas en, en español, te lo, te lo agradezco, aunque no sean muchas. Eh, te quería preguntar sobre eh, tus años con Joe Madden y cómo te formaron para este momento, porque esta es una situación única, porque es tu primer trabajo como manager, pero al mismo tiempo ya es un equipo que quiere un campeonato. Uh, claro que sí. O sea, yo me, me he ayudado con, con todas las cosas, eh, como ahora con, con Emilia, con, con, con todas las cosas que... que un jugador que no sabía de, lo, de, de la, la oficina y, y todo eso. Y como tú dijiste, aquí uh, ellos quieren ganar. Y es diferente con lo, los otros equipos que, que hice entre, entrevista. So, para mí, esto es una, una situación que, que fue un sueño, pero un sueño bien grande. So, uh, va a estar bien. O sea, yo, en este momento... Estoy muy alegre y estoy contento que estoy aquí. Love you. Dave, in uh, interview processes that you've been through, I'm sure you're asked, how would you do things in certain situations? How would you run spring training? How would you do this? How would you do that? Over the years, have you come up with uh, basically a Dave Martinez book as to how you would do things? And is that something that you would be implementing? Well, we, we've we've... I was in Tampa, uh, came to Chicago. We implemented a, uh, a, uh, a system where I thought, for me, this day and age, it's more about quality than quantity. Um, so we implemented a system where we get a lot done in a short, short amount of time, and we get guys to act, get rest and also be able to do the things like uh, more fitness stuff, more workouts, uh, and incorporate that in their – because the ultimate goal is to make sure that everybody leaves spring training healthy and re and ready to go, um, but we don't want to we don't want to burn anybody out neither. It's a long season, you know, um, so we, you know you'll see some different things uh, like Sundays. I call a Sunday fun day. Well, we'll we'll show up um, a little later. We might have a uh, a team family breakfast in the mornings and just have the kids out, let them run around for a little bit and and do kind of different things like that because I really believe that uh, as much as we are away from our families, it's good to, ha to get to do some things with them during the course of a season. So we'll implement a lot of that stuff and make it fun for everybody. Gabe, Craig Heiss from 1067 The Fan here in D.C. Welcome. Uh, can you address a little bit about the pressures that are on a major league manager nowadays? I mean, this is a team you're taking over that's – gone to the division series for the last six years and has yet to get through that first round. And we've seen with Joe Girardi and John Farrell and, you know, some others, when the success hasn't been achieved to winning it all, uh, how do you plan on taking that next step or taking this team to the next step? First and foremost, I never let the pressure, the, the pressure to exceed the pleasures of the game. So, um, for me, it's, it's just keeping it fun, staying in the moment, um, 
in the high leverage situations, try to teach the players how to slow everything down. Um, the, get, the game kind of gets quick uh, in moments. And um, as a bench coach and as a manager, I'll try to really emphasize on just slowing everything down. Just let the game come to you. We've done it. You know, you guys have done it all year long. Um, it's no different. Uh, the ultimate goal, like my message from here on out is to play the last game of the World Series and win. And, and that's, that's all we're going to concentrate on. That's all we're going to, uh, to worry about. And how do we do that? By winning one more game each day. In the back. Hey, Dave, over here in the back, uh, Winston Hilton, Swag Media. Um, looking at the roster as it is, I'm sure that you're pretty excited to talk to a lot of the players. But who are you, first off, uh, who are you most excited to talk to and maybe get in depth baseball-wise? You know, I'm, I'm actually excited to talk to all of them. I mean, um, for me, there's 25 guys on the roster. Uh, you, I utilize all 25 guys. Um, the 25th man, you know, has an important job. He's going to be put in a moment where he has a chance to help us win a, an important game. So every, every guy on that roster is important to me. So I can't wait to talk to all of them and pick their brains and, and, and see, how, see what they're thinking and see how we can improve uh, every, every daily you know, situation uh, uh, that we go through throughout the day. I talked to Doolittle. He showed up today, and, and I talked to him for about 15 minutes, and uh, we had a great conversation. And uh, I love some of the things that he was telling me. So, you know, I'll remember some of those things moving forward. I told him I'll probably call him again in a couple of weeks. And uh, if we're ever in the same state together during the winter, you know, we'll hang out, grab some dinner or some lunch or something. But I'm definitely about communicating and building relationships with all the guys. And, and I'm looking forward to that. And Jamal with the last question. Uh Jamal Collier again, MLB.com. It's kind of for both of you guys, but just for the coaching staff and how you kind of plan on filling that out, do you think it's important um, since you're a first-time manager to have kind of coaches who have experience with you, or do you want to have some guys that you know have kind of have, uh, met throughout the years or you make sure of both, or how, how do you kind of plan on that process going? I want to answer that. All right, we're, uh, we're going to attack it like we t attack everything. It's going to be a group decision, and Davey's got to be comfortable with the guys around him. We're going to put people in positions that to, to aid Davey in, in winning baseball games, and uh, there's, a, uh, there's, there's not a shortage of candidate who want to be with the Washington Nationals. Uh, we've received a lot of phone calls. We've uh, got a lot of interest uh, because it's a good team. It's a good franchise. It's a good organization. And with a good young manager uh, like Davey, there's, uh, there's plenty of people who want to be here.